Okay, welcome back to another video. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you would spot something missing in this picture. <laughs> um, I was right. Let's let's cover off <laughs> for a, a second time then. So. I did a bit more further research on this whole rear axle situation. If you don't know anything about it, then a quick Google of R7 rear axle would show you some examples of bad things that can happen with regards to this lock nut on here jamming up. And then what that does is when you try to undo it, it will twist the whole entire axle and will um, ruin the far sides uh, metal work here that holds the axle straight or in position So that can happen, but also if you can't get the nut off off the axle you got you end up Having to grind or drill the whole thing and it gets into a right mess So if you remember I said grease up the threads avoid that from happening, but also um, I will revise my torque that I'm using dip back down to around 77 foot pounds some would go even lower but i'm going to stick with 77 foot pounds on that for now and then i'm going to show you um some modifications that i'm going to do i'm actually i've actually bought it's not arrived yet sorry i bought a different nut and then i've got a secondary locking um thing that i'm going to do so i'm going to show you all of that and we're also going to try to make these metal plates that hang around on the front here the ones that show you the uh, alignment guides those star shaped things uh, i've modified them slightly so that they don't fall off once you pull the axle out and that's hopefully going to help us make quick changes of the rear wheel for track use etc so stick around and we'll show you all that in this video so there is a um, bit of a plan brewing then for our solution for the rear axle issues. Uh, we So this is the close-up of the nut. You can see the kind of locking mechanism in there. Uh, and it's this that seems to get a grab of or a hold or even some chemical reaction of the nut to the axle. So we're going to replace the nut without that locking mechanism and instead we're going to try use some kind of safety device like one of these pins with a drilled through hole in the end of the axle and that's going to be our secondary sort of safety device for the nut that's going to be on here. Uh, it, again it's important to keep a bit of grease on these threads to avoid any chemical reactions but we also want to just be extra safe with um, a mechanism like this being our secondary um, solution to stop the nut just winding off. Um, to do that we need to make a notch in the top of here because the kind of pin hits the top of there when it's through the axle. So we need a notch cut out here, a hole drilled through the axle and a different nut. Now whilst we're doing this um, to aid quick uh, wheel changes on the bike in general, I want to look at if there's a way which we can make. So normally when you take the wheel out the R7, this thing just wants to fall on the ground. Uh, these just want to slide in, in and out of the swing arm willy nilly. So they're just, everything's moving when you don't want it to be. You want to make things you want these kind of really want to stay in place because you've just taken the axle out. We'd like it so that these stay in place in the swing arm and these don't fall on the ground. So I'm going to think about maybe drilling some things uh, for either lock wire or for some small bolts to go and tap into some things. I've seen some photographs. Um, so I've got some inspiration on what to do there. So yeah, stick with us and we'll see how we end up. One of the common ways that people do it on race bikes is to drill a couple of holes in these adjuster plates uh, and then a hole in the swing arm like here and then you just lock wire the two together and that just keeps it in place in the end of the swing arm and not move very much. 
but we'll see if that's my solution or not by the end. Okay, so a quick update then. So we've got this hole drilled, as you saw, and I did use a little file just to dress the threads a little bit. And the nut does uh, screw back on past the hole nicely. Uh, so I've got two options, like I say, for uh, my secondary lock. Uh, so I'm gonna see which one I think works nicest. But that's that done. And then what I've been working on as well, if I bring them over here. We've got the notch, uh, I machined a notch in there for the pins to be extracted by. And then I've also been working on this, which is an optional thing just for me, for making the tire changes easier. So what this is going to do, so I, I, as you can see, I've managed to uh, drill some holes and then uh, tap a thread into the aluminium piece behind. So you can kind of just see the screws in between the two. And what that's hopefully going to do is um, stop this piece. Someone called it a Star Wars looking piece. <laughs> stop that from just falling on the floor when we remove the axle for changing wheels. And that's just going to help me do a quick wheel change so much easier. Again, the idea will be that this end piece also gets secured in a fashion somehow and not figured it quite out yet. But that's going to get um, secured in a fashion, so that's going to keep the adjusters and this this aluminium part held into the swing arm in a certain location. And then these uh, these will not be tight. These screws in here. And by that I mean they'll be loctited into the aluminium behind, but they won't compress these two pieces together because it needs to slide up and down whenever I do a chain adjustment with the screw here. So it's going to hold the thing in place but not actually compress the two together, if you get what I mean. And so that's hopefully, like I say, going to enable quick uh, wheel changes and not have me faffing around trying to hold all these things in place. I can just slot the axle straight back through and not have to worry about the positions of everything. That's the aim. Uh, there is a part uh, to be added to the actual wheel itself, which we call captive spaces. And those, if you've ever seen them, those collars, the spaces that sit on the axle, they have, you can get a version with a lip on it that sits in the oil seal on the bearing of the wheel and stops those falling out everywhere, which makes, again, such a difference when we're changing tires. So these, as you can see, this is the uh, right hand side of the bike and we've got those in there. I did use like a, a milling bit just to make sure that the heads of the bolts could sit flush and I'm kind of liking this solution. I'm going to try it out, install it on the bike and uh, we'll show you how it goes when I get there. Okay so you've seen the plan, you've seen me uh, mess about with these items. So the first job when I got here to the back to the bike is to drill some tiny holes in the swing arm frame which are gonna keep once we put some lock wire in over there it's gonna keep these in place um, there is I have seen other methods where somebody has drilled and tapped into the side of these items so that you don't have this external uh, lock wire up here now I kind of like the neatness of that solution, but also I don't want to weaken these already well-known for breaking parts. <laughs> I, th I think that tiny hole there is not really going to affect the strength of it. Drilling and tapping right there might just weaken at that point of load right there. So I guess, you know, this isn't for everyone. This is more for like track and race bikes solutions nobody wants a piece of lock wire on the road bike right there but for me it's not a problem so i'm going with that method now 
is an interesting point which I'd forgotten about. It's okay to hold these items here, but that still allows this to move in and out. So one potential would be to put a spring behind that piece, but I'm wondering if my method of these screws in here would be just enough friction, not, not compressing it loads, but enough friction just to hold this in place and not slide around. So I'm gonna try that first rather than doing anything with a spring or whatever between those two parts. Okay, so we've got the lock wire in. This is definitely a function over form situation. <laughs> so it's never gonna look amazingly pretty but I really won't care about that when I am uh, at the track trying to do a wheel change in five minutes. So, uh, and again, it's got, there's some flexibility there. This is not about ramming this home with a lot wire. It's just to hold it and mainly make sure it doesn't just fall out of the bike as well. Okay, right. So I'm now going to uh, gently clamp on this front piece over here. And we'll see if that can just give us enough friction to hold it in place um, and be able to slide back and forth too. So we'll try that. Okay, so with some uh, blue Loctite thread locker, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna do any more with this. I've just snugged it down gently. And as you can see, I can still slide it up and down but it doesn't want to just fall about. I can gently pull on this and it doesn't want to move, but if I firmly pull on it, then it moves. Now that might wear a little bit and become a little bit slacker over time. So we can adjust these ever so slightly. But the thread locker should come into effect over the next day And that will help this thing just hold in place and not fall out when we take the wheel out. So that is a bit of a result. And I'm going to work on the other side. And then eventually I'm going to show you how quickly we can change this wheel. It won't be the ultimate because I don't have the captive spaces for the, for the wheel. I'll show you what that means in a minute. I don't have those, so it won't be the ultimate fastest we can do. But it's still better to not have these flying out the back of the bike and these just flopping on the floor when we're trying to change the wheel quickly. So when you are drilling these little holes, just avoid the welds. Don't be drilling through the welds. Just go as close as you can and nice and out of the way. There's the bottom. Okay, so we're all buttoned back up again. I did do this side, as you can see, lock wired in for the moment, nothing too fancy just yet. Um, and this is my little secondary lock mechanism. That I don't know if I like that thin one, if I want to use the bigger one. So we'll see when the other nut arrives. Uh, getting the wheel in was still a bit tricky because of these spaces. So I'm talking about these ones. You see that silver one there? And that silver one in there. They just like to fall out all over the place. So once we've got some captive ones of those, that would make life a whole lot easier. The, the worst part is lining up the disc brake on here. But we'll have a few goes. We'll get some practice. And that should make things a little bit easier. But yeah, you get the idea. These now don't fall off. They actually hold this in place so they're not sliding in and out, which helps us get the axle through nice and straight in a pinch. So overall, I'm pleased. It's not quite perfect just yet, but it's a lot better than stock. All right, so I might have made a bit of a mistake and edited all this video and then this hadn't arrived in time. So I'm adding this at the end, so forgive me. So. Again, the aim is to get rid of this kind of weird locking mechanism on the standard nut because it might be causing us problems. 
and I have bought these two nuts. I just got one as a spare, I guess. And these are the same thread. They are a slightly different uh, overall size, so these need a 30 millimeter socket rather than the 27. And they sit on there nicely. I've torqued it up, and as you can see, the hole that was in the axle is covered up now. So now I'm going to mark this uh, nut and we will make indentations in here so that the lock pin will sit straight through and that will stop this spinning off at all. So I've torqued this up to the 77 foot pound, pound foot. Um, so it's torqued up to what I want it to be. So now when I make these notches they're going to line up with the hole and the pin will go through there. These apparently are from a Subaru Justy of some kind, from an axle. <laughs> so they are automotive graded, let's say. I didn't want to just buy something that was a random nuts from China or whatever. These are specifically for a vehicle of some kind, which gives me some faith that it's uh, just not going to, you know, break apart, snap, whatever. Um, so yeah, now all I've got to do is mark this up, make the modification to the lip, and we are golden. So I'm going to do that um, and show you what it looks like tomorrow, I guess. All right, so here is the modified nut. And very simple, just notch taken out. And then clean the threads up so that they're nice and clean. As clean as I can get them anyway, with no uh, bits of metal stuck in there or anything like that. So I'm going to install this and show you the clip. And there it is torqued up to 77 foot pounds and I can still get my clippy clip. You can still, sorry, fingers on the camera, still insert the clip in there. Or if I want to, I can even go, probably, sorry, <laughs> can I get this thing off here, there we go, I can still go for the bigger one if I feel that's necessary, I'm not sure it, you know, that's a bit too big that one I think, so we're going to go with this one, and we are going to, Just apply some lock wire from here to wherever. I'll pick a place. I might even drill a hole in the side of this and hang that off there. I don't know, what do you think? Is that strong enough? All it's got to do is stop rotation of the nut that way. I think it'll be all right. Um, but I might look out for a slightly thicker version that's not as tall, if you get it. So, but yeah, that's a general idea. You can also use, if you're not going to be taking the wheel on and off all the time, you can use one of those pins that goes through and then splits at the end and wraps around here. So you could use one of those pins as well. For the challenge, the challenge is to see how quickly you can get the wheel out, the sprocket off, the sprocket back in, as if we're changing a wheel basically putting the sprocket on a different wheel and then everything back in. I've got my torque wrench preset for 77 foot pounds for a 27 mil sprocket. We've got this device which helps me to tighten up the wheel uh, position onto the stops and I might not need this but a screwdriver if I just want to tweak the pads apart. So the timer will start as soon as I release the safety device here on the axle. So three, two, one, go.
Okay, stop the clock. Whew. There we go. Everything's buttoned up nicely. Good. All right, so there you go. I don't know how long that was, but I'll show it up on the screen. Um, so, really liking the effect of these not dropping away both sides. The, the main struggles really, like I say, keeping this spacer <laughs> in there and also the alignment of this brake uh, assembly to the axle. It wants to move around and slide about so you've got to try and realign that again. Um, but other than that it's not too bad really. I think all that's a pretty quick time and it definitely helps having these stay in position and single-handedly pushing the axle through is a lot easier. So I'm going to call that a win and a success so far. I'm happy with that and especially when I get those captive spaces installed that'll be even better. So that's this video. I'm not going to go on too long on this video, um, but there's going to be another video coming up pretty quickly, I think, on uh, some other works that I'm doing soon. So stick around and stay tuned. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Put a comment below, uh, advice, things I can do better, and all that good stuff. All right, I will see you in the next video.